Tonight, the TV regulator confirms it's investigating GB News after sexist comments were made by a presenter. But the boss of Ofcom tells me we're not talking enough about protecting freedom of expression. I've been speaking to Dame Melanie Dawes, who says while there are real issues around misogyny in public life, she doesn't want the regulator to shoot from the hip. Also tonight, our hearts are broken. The family of Eliane Anden, fatally stabbed in South London, paid tribute as the 15-year-old's death sparks a political row between the government and the London mayor. And after the US Secretary of State showcased his guitar skills, we've had a look at other politicians who've tried to strike a chord with voters. All that and more with the former Home Secretary Jackie Smith and the former Arts Minister Ed Vasey here to give their take for the next hour. It's Thursday, I'm Sophie Ridge live from Westminster and this is The Politics Hub. Hello, good evening. So the GB News sexism row, which started after one of its presenters made misogynistic comments about a journalist, continued today, with the media regulator Ofcom confirming it's investigating. It's received more than 7,000 complaints, and one of the presenters involved, Dan Wooten, today had his contract with Mail Online terminated. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pontificate about GB News. Frankly, I don't think that would be appropriate from someone who works for another broadcaster. Viewers can make their own minds up. But what I do want to talk about tonight is the media landscape and how it's regulated. You'll hear my interview with the head of Ofcom, Dame Melanie Dawes, in a few moments, which, I'll be honest, it was a little bit like interviewing your boss. Um, but something really jumped out to me from that interview because she said that the rules regarding impartiality in broadcasting haven't changed in 20 years and that that was a good thing, a good thing, because of stability. Well, in the last 20 years, the media landscape has been anything but stable. 20 years ago, Twitter hadn't even been invented. It would take another 10 years for TikTok to come onto the scene. It's been reported that GB News is looking at moving some of its pro programmes off of broadcast and making them streaming only, which would mean that just like the tech giants, Netflix and YouTube, Ofcom wouldn't have any powers over them. So are we really saying that the current system of regulation is able to keep up? So that's what we're going to be discussing in the first part of tonight's show. First, here's my conversation with the head of Ofcom, and it started with details of the current investigation. We've announced today that we've opened a formal investigation into that show on GB News on Tuesday night. Um, we received a number of complaints and we're investigating it under our rules for offence. So uh, that's hot off the press uh, and the work continues. And what does that mean? Are you thinking about calling in management to talk to them? Will you be interviewing people? No, look, it's good to have a chance actually to explain how it works because I know there's been quite a lot of concern and people have been talking about, uh, about how this works. Um, but fundamentally, um, there are rules that are set out in law by Parliament that require standards to be maintained for due impartiality and due accuracy for news and current affairs and for audiences to be protected from harm and serious offence in all broadcasting. Uh, but all of that needs to be done while upholding freedom of expression. So what Ofcom has to do when we have a case like this is weigh all that up gather the facts, be really clear which part of the broadcasting code we think is a concern, talk to the broadcaster, and then, as we've done today, open an investigation if we think that's needed. But we don't shoot from the hip, and I think the public doesn't want a regulator that just gives a knee-jerk response. I'll be honest, I feel like it's quite unusual for you to be doing an interview now, in the middle of a live investigation. It's the kind of bid we'll normally put in and then not hear anything back from. Is that an admission that you know you haven't been tough enough to this point? No, look, I know that there's been a lot of interest in this. Um, and concern been, as well. Yeah, there has. There's been real concern. And, look, I, I don't want to comment particularly on the show, because it is now subject to a live investigation, but I think we know that, you know, there are real issues around misogyny more widely in our public discourse. We know for our own risk from our own research at Ofcom, that women are much more likely to get a hard time on social media than men and more likely to feel really affected by that. So there are definitely wider issues here, but our job is to make sure after programmes have aired that we look at all the facts uh, and that we act in a way that's in accordance with our processes and with our rules, and that's what we've done this week. There's also concern about elected politicians having their own shows and interviewing another, other, other elected politicians on them. I mean, so tonight, for example, the Conservative Party Deputy Chair Lee Anderson interviewing the Conservative Party Home Secretary Suella Braverman. I mean, is that right? Well, look, we are a post-broadcast regulator, um, so we look at programmes after they've been aired. We've and seen it many times before, haven't we? 
Yeah, well, look, there are rules on there are rules on politicians not being able to present the news. Those are actually set out by Parliament really clearly in the primary legislation. But when it comes to current affairs, and we've said this recently on a judgment uh, last week, in fact, it is possible for politicians to present a show, provided that they meet the due impartiality rules and the due accuracy rules. And that doesn't mean equal balance of views, but it does mean that a sufficiently wide range of views needs to be brought to bear. Do you really think that's happening on GB News with multiple Conservative politicians, some of them members of the government, presenting their own shows? Well, look, we've opened up audience research into this because actually the rules haven't changed over the last 20 years and I think that's a really good thing to have that stability but what has changed is our media landscape. We've got more and more shows coming in on TV and radio but also we've got that wider social media landscape. I think a lot of the time what people are seeing uh, is actually clips on social media which don't represent the whole programme. Um, it's Ofcom's job to look at programmes once they've been aired in the round and see whether, if you're talking about impartiality, whether that's been preserved across the programme as a whole. I guess some people might find that quite extraordinary what you just said, that it's a good thing that the rules haven't changed in 20 years. I mean, many people would say that's a really bad thing because the landscape has changed so dramatically. Gordon Brown last night, for example, said, you know, because we've got a far wider range of broadcasters, the system of regulation is not good enough to cope for it. Ofcom needs to have more teeth. He's right, isn't he? Well, it's certainly the government is opening up in the media bill the need to extend the number of services that we regulate uh, to make sure that some of the streamers, for example, are caught by some form of broadcasting code that looks rather similar to what we do now for TV and radio. But um, I just want to say that freedom of expression, I think, is sometimes perhaps not as prominent, prominent in these debates as I think it should be. Um, the rules are designed to uphold standards, particularly for news and current affairs but also to preserve freedom of expression. And that's not just the freedom of expression of the broadcaster or the opinion former or the presenter. It's actually the freedom of the audience to hear a wide range of views. So, well, even stuff like what Lawrence Fox said. I mean, well, we are investigating that programme, clearly. I mean, that's taking freedom of expression to a real, you know, far extremes. Mm -hmm. Well, we are investigating that, and we've announced that today. But... I do think that uh, you know the stability and flexibility of the rules has actually served us well over the years. There is a question about which services are covered by them, and as I said, we've definitely opened up audience research to get views from the public on the question of politicians presenting news and current affairs. Um, you're talking about the different plurality of the media, social media, broadcasting, print. It feels to me like the landscape has changed so dramatically. People mm. are using different medias, listening to different mm. medias. You have presenters who are acting on different... Um, media as well. Would it be better to have a cohesive system, bringing it all together, rather than a jigsaw piece? Mm. Look, I think that's a really good question, and we've done a lot of work at Ofcom, and we're doing more right now, looking at actually that question of the wider social media landscape in particular, because our research shows that if you get your news mostly from social media, from a social media feed, actually you find it harder to discriminate between real and fake news, and you're more likely actually to get stuck in a rabbit hole where you don't actually see anybody else's views on important topics. So we do think that's important, and there's not very much transparency about how those feeds are constructed or how we all get fed the diet of news uh, and the mix of that in our day-to-day -day use of social media. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about as well um, is GB News in particular. So Michelle Donnellan um, spoke to me last night saying that the Lawrence Fox interview was an isolated incident. She doesn't have any wider concerns about the channel. Do you have wider concerns about the channel? Well, we've opened up a number of investigations. How many investigations? We've actually got nine ongoing live investigations and then a number that have already concluded. So, uh, you know, we do have a lot of engagement with GB News right now. But as I said, you know, we welcome diversity of different programming and I believe the rules are flexible and allow different perspectives uh, to be able to brought to bear. So do you think without GB News, there's a risk that the broadcasting culture is too similar? Well, I certainly think diversity and plurality is important. Um, and so, as I said, freedom of expression, I think, is really important for us to remember in these debates. Uh, Ofcom's job is to uphold that while also maintaining standards. And, you know, overall, I think our system works because when you look at the data, you can see that the public's trust in TV and radio news is higher than for any other form of media. So I think 
we are getting quite a lot right across our system and that's testament to broadcasters such as Sky and some of our other national broadcasters actually delivering really, really high quality news and current affairs to the public. I feel like a lot of people listening to what you're saying will think you sound quite complacent. You mm. think that the current system works and they'll be looking at things like what happened mm. with Lawrence Fox and um, with Dan Whitten. I mean, I watched it. It's quite sh I was quite shocked by it, I'll be honest. Um, they'll be looking at the fact that Lee Anderson is boasting about having the first UK soil broadcast exclusive with the Home Secretary. Someone who's he works with his colleague and thinking, why aren't you more worried? Well, look, I don't want to come across as complacent, clearly. We've got a really important job to do here at Ofcom, but I think we've shown by our track record that we do act. As I say, we have a number of investigations open already into GB News, um, more uh, ongoing, and these standards are very, very important. But at the same time, the tools that Parliament has given us here are really important ones, and the need to ensure freedom of expression means that we don't use them lightly. So we will always work with broadcasters to try and help them get their compliance into order um, you know, as a priority. Being honest with you, I've been a broadcaster for 10 years. I've always been slightly terrified of Ofcom. Um, you know, now I'm wondering, did I get it all wrong? Are there rules actually way more flexible than I ever realised? No, look, I think you can see, as I said, from the fact that the public really trusts our TV news that we're getting a lot right in this country. And that's higher than you see in other countries. And I think it is a testament to the actual sort of stability and clarity and the standards in our regulatory framework. There's a serious point I want to make here, though. I feel like the system works because people self-regulate because of a fear of Ofcom. But now with a load of new players who are pushing boundaries, testing limits, it feels like the curtain's been pulled back. There aren't any terrifying powers. It's a bit like the Wizard of Oz. Mm. Well, I, I really don't buy that. As I said, we've got a lot of investigations open at the moment. And we have shown in the past that, you know, where we see a problem, we will act uh, very quickly sometimes, as we've actually done this week, I think. Um, and we will make sure that if something has gone wrong, that we find that broadcaster in breach once we've looked at the evidence and the facts and weighed all that up. But we are not here to tell broadcasters how to run their shows. It is for them to determine how they serve the public. And I believe that in this country we are incredibly well served by some fantastic broadcasters with really high quality investigative journalism. And I want to make sure that you and your colleagues are free to be able to continue to deliver that service to the public. So I don't want you to be scared of Ofcom, but I do want everybody to feel that those standards are real and it's our job to uphold and enforce them. Interview there with Melanie Dawes. Well, let's bring in our panel, shall we? Uh, Jackie Smith, former Home Secretary, and Lord Ed Vasey, former Arts Minister. Good to have you on the programme. Former um, Ofcom Minister, well, in fact. Oh, oh, well, I feel like we should go to you yeah, first. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, well, explain, yeah, okay, you, no, no, you're the. It's yeah, the it's right. all happened on my watch. The slow decay of Ofcom. No, <laughs> you're right. You're the longest-serving culture minister. Yeah, ever, I was the right? broadcast minister. Although I kept well out of the uh, bid for Sky. I can tell you that was a bullet that I dodged, but. Uh, I worked very closely with Ofcom for six years as a minister, and I have huge respect for Ofcom. I think it's a fantastic regulator. Uh, Melanie wasn't in charge of it when I was the minister, but I think she's a fantastic uh, boss of Ofcom now. Um, and I think you've got to remember that in this country, having a regulator like Ofcom, which is pretty light touch, still does ensure that, broadly speaking, across the media landscape, the broadcast media landscape, we've got kind of fair and relatively unbiased reporting. And when you watch the news, whether it's Sky News or other news channels, you can be pretty sure you're going to get a pretty good take on the day's news without any kind of underlying bias. Now, obviously, the landscape's changing. Someone like GB News, very provocative uh, channel. You know, what happened with Lawrence Fox was just downright offensive. Yeah. It's not bias or some kind of right-wing conspiracy. It's just somebody being unbelievably offensive. And whatever channel he was on, quite rightly, Ofcom uh, would investigate. I think, you know, we do have to think through, as you were saying at the top of the programme, when you've got so much social media and so much news is consumed that way, how does Ofcom navigate that? And it has actually taken over regulation of the internet, if I can put it that way, that we've just passed the Online Safety Act. So that is its next big challenge. What's your take? Do you think that, do you agree with that, that actually, look, our broadcasting environment now is pretty unbiased and Ofcom's doing a decent job? I agree with Ed that we are lucky, uh, have been lucky up to this point with the broadcast media that we have. Largely, we haven't had the sort of populist, one-sided TV channels that we're now beginning to see uh, develop. 
I think the challenge is the one that you set to uh, Melanie Dawes, which is about the development of those channels. And it's also about the range of different media outlets, mm. including social media, that people are now getting, their, uh, now getting their information and their news from. And I thought, I mean, she has a point that it's a good thing that the rules have remained the same. The rules being based on this idea that across programming, you would have a, a, a broad balance. But I think probably she didn't quite answer that question about how do you deal with the much more complicated world that we now find ourselves in. And particularly, I think she actually identified one of the things that I feel most uneasy about, and that's the idea that lots of people now only get their news on social media, and they do tend to get a, uh, a news which sometimes you can't depend on Ofcom regulation or the, you know, the good uh, news values of Sky or the BBC or ITV. And therefore, they end up as well being 